There is a place, not here or there, but somewhere in between. There is a space in the thin air that really can be seen. If you listen and observe, you may be surprised. Some may call it Camelot or even Paradise. Some may say you cross a bridge, others through a door. But all I know about this place is that I call it Evermore. Evermore. Good evening, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell, and I'm the producer and host of the Evermore Paranormal Network. On this episode, we're doing something special. It's called a Ghostathon. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hi everyone, Herman Mike Stevenson here, the paranormal man or the professor, whatever you want to call me except late for dinner. I'm here to give you another lecture. Hopefully it's useful. Hopefully the last lecture was useful. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the EVPs. And there's a lot of controversy now about all the different types of EVPs people are getting, but most people are still huddling it under one category. Now, we can all call them electronic voice phenomenon. In a matter of speaking, they are, because not all of them are truly understandable as to where they come from, but we know a lot of them do come from spirits. And we actually do know scientifically how they're created. At one time, there was a idea or a hypothesis that they were created magnetically. But this didn't go over well with the people that say, oh, I know spirits have, they have eyes, they have ears, they have mouths. Well, in their original form, their, their body, so to speak, they did have these things. And we use these things because we speak in percussion. Our ears listen in percussion. Everything we do sound-wise is with percussion because we're moving air and that frequency of that air moving is what creates the sound we hear. Our brain interprets those vibrations into sound. Let's move on a little bit to, and I'm gonna start with really, talking about the spirits. Now, most spirits that come from people, and I say it that way because not all spirits are people spirits. There are other spirits out there from other beings. Uh, we don't really know a lot about them, but let's say they're a smaller category and then we often get these confused with our demons which I'll get into a little bit maybe later if I can if not it'll be a whole nother lecture because it is a big category now back to spirits now spirits are the essence of you they spirit is your energy it's contained within you it's with you within you oh I'll get it out it's contained within you there we go um, and inside of you is the spirit, and it is what you are. In other words, when you die and you get rid of that crummy 98% water and dust, what is left is your life energy, and that is your spirit. And basically, what type of person you were or are now, and I say were or, I mean after you pass on and the body dies, your spirit lives on. And that spirit is your essence. That is what you are. And I know some of this may sound a little strange to you, and I'm going to add this in there too, because all this is kind of necessary in the background. I don't, I don't want to just start somewhere and totally throw you off track with the information, scientific information I've given you. Because, you know, paranormal in itself is a man-made word. Uh, it has limitations because it's a man-made word. And when everyone sits there and tries to figure out 
what the paranormal is, they're often stumped. They don't get very far. And the reason for that is it's man-made paranormal. What we're really studying, what we're really looking at, when we go into a house that's haunted or, or maybe just has a spirit running around in there, because just because you have spirits running around in a building doesn't mean it's actually haunted. But we'll use that term if there's a bunch of them running around. But it doesn't also mean that they're evil spirits either, because not all spirits are evil. And not everything we see out there is evil. It's man's conception of that. But that's another story in itself. Let's get back to the spirits. Now, their energy. Now, for any of us who have gone, at least in the high school, have learned that energy can be changed in form, but not created. Well, that's God's job. That's why. I'm not making this a religious session either, believe me. But let's just say that's on his side of the table. Since the spirits are what they are, they're actually from the supernatural. And if we start looking at our paranormal world in the sense and understanding of understanding the supernatural, a lot of what we can't figure out, a lot of what seems confusing to us will suddenly fall into place, believe me. Because that's, this is what we're really looking at. We're looking at the supernatural. And this is on the low end level, our supernatural. It's the spirits and the energy contained within it. And these spirits, they have to have a way of communicating. They do it with each other merely because energy can talk to energy. And we use speech and we talk to each other, but our, ours, remember, is percussion. Theirs is not. How do they do it? Well, that one thing that by its own name, we'll call it electricity, which really means I don't know what it is. That's honestly what the word electricity means. I don't know. That is an energy form created by a vibration of energy. It can be done through magnetic flux waves. It can be done through a combination of chemical reactions. And I'm not going to get into a science lesson on that, unless maybe you want to. If so, you can write me. We'll give the address and what have you later. But right now, I want to tell you a little bit about the fact that their energy is directed just like a radio wave. It's actually a pulse generated or PM wave. And it, it comes out to us as an EMF wave, electromotive intelligence. And that's how scientists look at it, EMI. So really our EVPs are EMI scientifically because they're a force of energy that is generated through a magnetic impulse. Now, for those who are not familiar with how broadcast radios are done, the frequencies on broadcasting, even the television show you're looking at now, has a frequency, has a channel. That channel denotes what frequency it operates on. Now, there are many frequencies within that frequency. The voice you hear, the visual you see, those are created through combination of different frequencies. Again, getting back to our spirit, and I hope I haven't lost you, but getting back to our spirits, this is the method that they use to communicate. They use burst of pulsed energy or magnetic flux. And this magnetic flux is what we generally pick up on our equipment. And I'll, I'm going to go a little bit into that in a moment. But I, I want to emphasize the fact that this is energy generated. And it's in its rawest form. And because it's in its rawest form, there will be very little articulation with it, considering the fact that articulation comes with the movement of our mouth, our lungs, and what have you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break right here, and I'm going to come right back and tell you a little bit more about it, hopefully give it time to sink in. My journey skating for the gold taught me a lot, but my journey with breast cancer has been one of my greatest teachers. Every woman's breast cancer is unique. Be Wiser educates and empowers women to take control of their breast cancer treatment plan and help navigate their own path beyond five years. Talk to your doctor about information and tests to personalize a treatment plan that fits your needs. I did. Be informed. Be wiser. 
Support survivors like us. Alrighty, everyone. I'm hoping that that pause uh, that we just did gave everything a, a chance to sink in a little bit because it can get a little bit overwhelming as the scientific explanation is given. Again, moving back to the EMI, the electromagnetic intelligence, um, how that comes about scientifically is it is a mechanical creation of vibrations done through magnetism. And you say, well, how is there any move? There's no moving parts. Don't need moving parts to, for energy to create an electromotive force. It's done merely by the push of the electrons that they're sending out. And these waves of electrical force, which show up as a magnetic force in the frequency they're sent, that is what we're actually picking up through our different devices. Now, there was a, like I said, there was a theory at one point that this was a magnetic field, but no one really went into it deeply enough to analyze it, and I have done that. Uh, I've known for certain that this is what it is. I've, I, we figured it out scientifically uh, from about 2010 on up. And what we know is that they give us a, a magnetic pulse through the air with the intelligence of what they want to converse about. And honestly, the waves that some psychics will pick up when they hear a voice these are the exact same waves. Uh, due to the fact that they're sent out in a frequency that your brain can pick up is why the, these psychics are able to hear this through their inner ear. But how do our electronic equipment pick it up? Well, let's look a little bit about it. We have the microphone. Now, again, the microphone really was designed for us to use because we speak with a percussion, in other words, there's a movement of air that moves the diaphragm in the microphone. Um, unfortunately, we're not set up to actually for me to give you a visual demonstration of that, but if you ever feel, if you ever, don't do this with a good microphone. If you have one that's broken or something, you might want to take it apart, look inside and see how it works. But there is a diaphragm that vibrates from the air movement and that's attached to usually a coil and the coil rides inside a magnet. Now, some of you may suddenly be saying, well, gee whiz, he's describing a speaker. Well, yes, I am. And that's exactly how the speaker is made. It's made the same way, except that instead of it giving us those vibrations back out, it's picking them up by the movement of the coil. When the coil moves around the magnet, it creates a magnetic field. And this magnetic field, of course, goes into the amplifier which goes into your recorder. Now, let's move back to our spirits. They're sending the device, the magnetic flux already. So there's no air movement, so the coil doesn't move. But the magnetic flux wave that they're sending out gets attached directly to that coil and sends that information, that intelligence down to the recorder. Now, no part of speech that or communication that anything has ever been made with has been able to get there on its own accord. Everything needs what they call a carrier. All of your radio stations and TV stations have what they call a carrier. Um, it used to be at one time when stations uh, didn't run 24 hours a day that when they signed on or signed off, they would tell you what their carrier wave frequency is. So everything actually creates a frequency. And what's interesting is everything vibrates at their own frequency. Now, when you have an object that vibrates at its own frequency, that's called a base frequency. If you were to monitor the frequency of any object, even a rock, truthfully, um, it take, well, it's very expensive equipment to monitor it, but it's, it's a spectrograph it gives you, and it tells you which frequencies is actually coming off of that. Well, the, the, the spirit speaking actually create base frequencies also. And what's really interesting is the fact that technically there are four different bands that they speak on. 
uh, that I've discovered. There may be more. Uh, and I've also discovered, since I first discovered the bands that they use, um, the, the bandwidth is starting to increase. Now, I don't know if that's because of the number of spirits that are talking, or it's just that um, the, they've been allotted a, a larger amount of frequency so that they don't interfere with others. Because that's exactly what happened to radio and television. As, as they needed more and more uh, radio stations, TV stations, they had to increase the space they used. So obviously this is what's happening in the spirit world. Um, uh, something big is probably going to happen soon is why they're doing all this. But let me just um, give you an idea, for instance, that the groups that I've been able to analyze, and I do this through monitoring the EVPs and looking for their spectrograph as to what frequencies they're operating on. Here's the interesting thing, again, back to that base frequency. I've noticed there's a particular frequency that's there during the entire communication. Now, if you have, if, if I had an oscilloscope here, and if you know what it is, great. If you don't, it's basically a picture tube or a computer monitor that has a bunch of wavy lines. Those wavy lines are frequencies. And when you look at a spectrograph of uh, a voice print, for instance, you'll have a one frequency that will remain standing there by itself, and all the rest will be changing back and forth. That one that stays by itself, and here's a, here's a clue how to find it, it will be the one with the highest amplitude. That's something you really should remember. The base frequency has the highest amplitude, and it stays constant through the communication. So again, if you were looking at it, you would see a band of frequencies jumping up and down, but this one frequency is just sitting there. And again, there's actually four different categories that these come in. Uh, the first one of which is between 600 and 645 hertz. So there'll be a bass frequency there and the voice will be within that same range. The second one is from 440 to 460 hertz. The third one, is down at 100 to 125 hertz. There is a fourth one, which I'll get into in a moment, but I want to just let you clue this in a little bit. Uh, 1,100 1, hertz is man, and 1,300 hertz is women. Women have a higher voice, therefore their bass frequency is a little bit higher. So I just threw those two extra in just to give you an idea of what to look for. When we come back in a moment, I'm going to give you the good one. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it, but with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Hi everyone, Mike Stevenson back with you again. And I did save you the best frequency for last, and I did that for a reason, because it's a very, very interesting band that they communicate on, and a very interesting bass frequency. Um, the bass frequency itself is 753 hertz. It's above the frequency generated at category one I give you. And it has some very, very interesting uh, things about it. Uh, I know that many of you out there have done investigations where you're in a room that there's no reason for anyone's voice to echo, but you'll pick up an echo. Normally, it's your EVP you're picking up at an echo. Well, I can guarantee you that that echo communication is on the 753 band. Why is that? Well, scientists have actually managed to put together, and the funny thing is a lot of this discovery is not done by research in the paranormal. This is done in regular scientific laboratories, uh, like NASA, just to give you an example. Um, they discover things, and because they're scientists, they make notes about it. And they take these notes, and they give it out in little crib notes to other scientists. And 
if something like that comes up, I often look at it because it'll catch my eye. For instance, one blurb I got from NASA was they discovered that there was uh, some type of intelligent communication at 19 hertz. They didn't elaborate any further than that, just giving us that information that there is intelligence, something's coming through at 19 hertz. And what do they consider intelligence? Well, intelligence is any type of communication that is not repetitious and it's not like a heartbeat that just keeps the same beat, beat, beat. It's something that varies for some reason. So that gives them a pattern to work with. The pattern may repeat itself, but it won't be just one constant beat. And that way, they usually know that um, it, there's some intelligence in there, that it's coming from something generating it. So th this is what they determine. And determining that is when they put this particular little blurb in their paper, which I happened to get and read. So I felt that's interesting. And I'm going to elaborate further in one of these shows. I'll be telling you more about that. But let's get back to the 753, that special one. Now, here's something that has been discovered about it, that when we get an EVP that echoes, has an echo in it, our voice that we're picking up, the voice of the spirit is echoing, you'll often find that 753 cycles is our base frequency. Now, what their hypothesis is involving this is that the intelligent communication that we're getting is coming through a vortex. It's traveling through something. The same basic principle as all our other frequencies where they have a base frequency, where they have a carrier wave, because that's what a base frequency is, it's a carrier wave. But in this case, it's traveling through some other form of communication, a vortex. Now, if, if you want to picture what, a, what, what intelligence through a vortex is like, go get an empty um, paper towel roll and speak through it. And when you do, you'll notice it has a slightly different sound to it. Well, that's exactly what a vortex is. And that's exactly why we're getting the echo because when they start analyzing this echo, what they found was it was echoing at 753 hertz. So the frequency difference between the frequency of, of the intelligence and the echo part of the intelligence, the frequency between the two was 753 hertz. So that's how an echo actually works. An echo is, is the same frequency doubling back on itself. That's why you'll hear it, you know, um, like that uh, commercial about the call drop and the guy yelling over the top of a mountaintop and he hears it back several times. Well, that several times is the amount of space between the mountains. Actually, if you wanted to compute uh, how far something is apart from you, where it will echo, you take the uh, frequency of our voice and how fast it travels and divide that with the amount of seconds it takes for your echo to come back. And that will give you a rough idea of the distance. So you see there's a lot of use for that. But getting back to the 753, it has another property which is very interesting too. And that is, and this is a more recent discovery, when I say more recent, I believe it was discovered in like 2012. Um, they discovered that lightning has a frequency of 753 hertz. Now, we know that lightning is primarily a static electricity, but again, everything that is in the universe has some form of base frequency. So the lightning does have a vibration within itself of 753 hertz. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this, this creates that echo we hear when something is coming through that 753 hertz. So there may also be some form of communication happening there. And what I'm gonna tell you about there is another discovery I found many, many years ago. Well, maybe not that long ago. Let, let's go back to the early 2000s. Um, I discovered, for instance, that whenever I had a recording, just before I got the EVP, I would get a, like a click sound, and I never could figure out what the click sound was. And also, almost at the beginning of each EVP, uh, there'd be two clicks. 
Well, what I eventually learned was these clicks were the result of a static discharge. Now, static electricity is basically micro lightning. It's the same thing as lightning, except it's on a much smaller scale. So it doesn't have quite the distance to travel. This, this static spark that occurs is what gives you the spike on the recording, which usually is in a straight line, right? up. It's like separating or starting a piece of paper. Um, that's what this line is. And often, very often, when you do this, what you find is that right after that is where your communication starts. And I'm going to 